What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark, back from movieguy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And today, we're doing House of the Dragon, Season 2, Episode 5. We're halfway through the season. It was halfway point. And the last episode was nuts. Used up a lot of the budget, so this episode's going to have a lot of talking. It's basically where we are. Uh, it's, uh, this show is has audio description on Max, written by uh, Connor. Uh, oh my god, I forgot his last name. And narrated by Roy Samuelson. Um, and yeah, so uh, it's it's a great episode for Olivia Cook as Allison. Um, I absolutely adore her in this. That's, that is my initial takeaway is Olivia Cook, Emmy consideration. This is the scene. Uh, but first I want to introduce myself. I've been doing this in more and more of my videos since I have a lot of blind people. I have a black baseball cap on backwards, black sunglasses. I'm wearing a Mario shirt, which doesn't make any sense for Game of Thrones, but you know, it represents me. I like Mario. So... Where have we left off? It turns out Aegon's not dead. I mean, he, for all intents and purposes, is. But uh, they carried his, like, barely alive body carefully in this, like, chamber thing all the way back to, uh, to home. And uh, the, the, the maester is sitting there and he's, like, cutting off this material. And I'm like... I feel like his, like, guts are just gonna spill out. Like, he's being held in by his body armor at this point. No, that didn't happen. No. Yeah, the maester, there was, there was a reference to, like, you could see the bone protruding, and then he said it. Like, like there was missing flesh, and you could just see straight through to the bone. I'm like, yeah, they don't really have medicine. So I don't really foresee Aegon living. Uh, even later on, the maester's like... Yeah, um, I did what I could for him, but I think there's something inside that's probably damaged. Uh, you know, just a maester. Um, I'm not a surgeon. Uh, so, <laughs> he doesn't say that. Was, that. I added that last part. That was my liberty with the dialogue. But uh, he, yeah, he's he does all he can do for Aegon, and Aegon hasn't really woken up, and he's just like... His breathing sounds painful. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, dear God. Of course, nobody can kill the king because that's, you know, it's a crime. So they have to let him literally suffer and, and eventually, I don't know, suffocate to death or whatever is going to happen to him. <sighs> so Allison, and Allison doesn't really seem that, you know, upset about her son. I mean, not in the same way Rainer I was about Luke. Uh, and does, is it like Allison knows that she like raised two assholes? Because kids suck. Uh, they do. And now we have Eamon, who is in, in the room. Allison is like, well, and the, and the council is like, well, we need a, we need somebody to rule in his stead. I can't. Technically, he's still alive. So no one is the technical leader. Um, but Allison is like, well, I was regent for Viserys. Uh, and I could do it again. And they're like, no, hold on. No, you can't. Remember, our whole thing is this. You know, we're fighting against. We don't believe that a woman can lead. It has to be Aemon. Aemon's next in line. And it's like... Uh, I guess, uh, that's when you really know, by the way, that, uh, it, it didn't matter to this council who Viserys' names was, because no, you're not actually here because you don't believe, because you believe a woman can't lead, you're here because you believe that Viserys' last word was Aegon. That's why you're here. So, and I've heard people talking about this too, by the way. They're like, oh, well, it's it's this 
dynamic and she's realizing that she's on the wrong side and because there's this really great moment where the sound just kind of drops out and and you can like feel her stewing and just sitting there and like just dropping out of the moment and just like zoning out and just not even hearing after she's like betrayed by everybody including Christian who at first says yeah I mean Allison makes sense and then everybody else is like no it has to be Eamon and then finally Christian is like uh, Amen. And, uh, so yeah, she just kind of zones out. And I could kind of see her after this getting on like a horse or whatever and just riding off and joining Raider and being like, I fucked up. I'm sorry. Uh, I know what it's like now. My bad. Let's, let's go kill my kid. <laughs> I know it's not going to happen, but I felt like in that moment she was thinking it. Like it was one of the thoughts running through her head. Uh, so she's very suspicious, and I think she knows Eamon had a part in Egan's demise. Uh, he's being very quiet, and Christian is being super cagey. Uh, I love how he returns. Like, when he left, he was all like, can I have, you know, can I have the the favor of... You know, and like that whole thing. They, that was when he left, right? He was still flirting with Allison. He comes back and he's like, I, I'm not having any of this. I can't. Um, what happened out there? I don't I don't want to talk about it. It's just, uh, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I mean, he's just like really just out of it. Just, he's, uh, him and was, him, him was great. Him did great. He was amazing. It was amazing. Eamon was uh, just, uh, everything was great. Eamon was, uh, you know, it's just like, he's like, I don't really want to die. So uh, I'm just going to stay, tell everybody Eamon was awesome. He was a hero. And uh, I'm not going to tell everybody what I saw, which was Eamon targeted his brother for termination. Um, and I guess there's some debate about, like, did he actually do that? Or did he just think, you know, uh, well... I'll test, you know, he, did he know what the consequence of what he was doing would be? I think yes. I mean, we saw in the previous episode, they set it up pretty well. Aegon went in there and teased Aemon and made a big deal about it. I think Aemon was pretty this. And Aemon rides the biggest dragon, Vegar, and has the most power. And he used it and he just decimated his brother. He's like, this is where I can win. And I can make it look like an accident because I also have to go after Rainers and you happen to be right there. So, yeah, he knew what he was doing. But, um... And he seems to have no problem taking control. And as soon as he takes control, what's the first thing he does? He locks down King's Landing. So, King's Landing is shut. Uh, he, we keep cutting to Hugh and the the... His raven-haired wife. And uh, they have a daughter who's, like, coughing. And I'm like, why do I know Hugh by name? Like, why is this family important? What is Hugh going to go and do for me, like, as a character in this in this franchise? That's what I want to know. Because we, we've now been with them quite a bit. They're just peasants. They're a peasant family. They're not like the Freys. Like, we also got to meet the phrase uh in this jace in his infinite wisdom he wanted to do something and be useful so he took his dragon because he had an idea a strategy that involved uh approaching from a different direction but he needed to curry favor with the phrase and with the twins and he went there and of course for all game of thrones fans you know we were all like no jace don't do it <laughs> You can't trust the phrase. <laughs> it's a nice day for a red wedding. And uh, I was I was like, there was a weird thing that was, um, before I watched the episode, a recap of it popped up in my feed. And it was like, uh, Rainer loses important support or something like that is what it was. And... Um, it was like alluding to the fact that he that she was going to suffer another loss this episode, and I was like, "Oh God, it's going to be Jace." He went to the phrase. <laughs> this is not going to work out well for him, um, but no, surprisingly, it did. 
So, uh, surprisingly, I don't think anybody died this episode. So, yeah. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was about. Uh, I mean, the people, Damon is definitely doing some stuff over there that's sketchy, but he's still seeing people who aren't there. So, um, that's concerning. Uh, it makes it really hard to think that Damon has any sort of thought process going through when he's off on his own and he keeps, I guess that's his mother now? He's seeing his mother? Oh, things are so weird. Damon is so weird and they're not giving any context or reason for it. He's just seeing shit that isn't there. And a lot. To the point where it's like interrupting conversations. And it's like, did you hit your head and we missed it? Like, why are you crazy all of a sudden? What's up with you? What, what, what we got going on with Damon here? Um, and he does that thing again where he he tries to tell somebody to do something. And because he's so vague and leaves it open to interpretation, that person goes and does like the worst possible thing that they could <laughs> that they could do of that interpretation. It's like, I need you to go to the store and get some food. And then you're like, oh, that's a simple task. I've sent somebody on. And then they come back with either like only one item or the entire store, you know? So they're like, hold on. I got everything from the store and I murdered everybody else while I was there. But now we own the grocery store. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, that is not what I meant. What a complete overreaction to what I just said. <laughs> I said we needed food. I didn't mean, dear god, you know. Or, you know, you send somebody and they're like, they got a box of crackers? Is this good? <laughs> I feel like people all the time, Damon tries to tell them to do something and they just totally misinterpret what it is that he's trying to say in like the most wild way possible like, you know just nobody can like pick up on what he's dropping like he tries to be very sly and say what he wants to say without saying it. he needs to be more direct and say this is what i want you to fucking do because everybody just keeps doing i keep trying to do this but apparently i work with idiots so this is what i mean when i say this because when he gets accused of war crimes he's a little bit like what uh, and then they're like, well, you killed the, the kid. And he's like, who is that? I'll have their head. And it's like, well, you, you, I mean, technically you, you kind of did. Like, he doesn't want to take any ownership of anything. He's just like, ah, fuck it. Fuck you. Get out of here. I'm your king. You know, <laughs> just, uh, Damon's going to be really destructive for the future of, uh, Team Black. So, of Castle Black. So, I just, I don't know. I don't even know if he's still on, uh, Rhaenyra's side anymore. Uh, Rhaenyra is reckoning with the fact that she wants to go out to battle, but she can't. And uh, they're trying to protect her, which is the same thing Jace. Like, she's trying to tell Jace, she's like, listen, because you're second in line, you're like, you're like my VP, you know? Uh, I need, I need you to not die because there isn't another one of you. I lost Luke, you know? I can, aff I can afford to lose one of you I lost the one. Now I have you, you know? Um, so, um, I feel, you know, he's just frustrated, but hopefully Jace understands. I like Jace as a character. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I know that because this is a prequel series, <laughs> things are not going to work out well for any of these characters in the end. I don't think, I think everybody, <laughs> this is just not a series where people are going to survive. I mean, we're going to have a really bleak series finale when we get to it. It's just going to be like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my Jesus. And it feels like we're, we're approaching closer and closer. Uh, Bela didn't have to go to Corliss, her grandfather. And they talked about um, Rhaenys. And, you know, the choice that she made and Corliss is <sighs> bristled by this experience. But um, he's being offered Hand of the King to uh, Rhaenyra. And Bela is just 
like, you know, um, she knew what she was doing. She wanted to go out, you know, in fire. Like, she, that's what she wanted to do. Uh, we're dragon riders. That's what we, this is what, and she says, this is, that's how I want to go, you know. So, uh, he meditates on it a lot. It looks like he's going to accept the Hand of the King, which will be a solid asset for Rhaenyra, a nice voice, um, a nice presence, somebody who has a lot of power, who has a lot of respect, because she doesn't get a lot of respect in a council room. She gets a lot of people who talk around her. She does send one of the council members who challenges her off to figure out what the fuck is going on with Damon. Um, <laughs> so... She's like, I don't, I don't know. Ravens are not doing it. I can't send ravens. Um, so why don't you, why don't you go? And he thinks he's like, am I being sent away as a punishment? And he's like, no. She's like, no. I, I just, I need to know what's going on with Damon. Like, <laughs> it's, it's pissing me off. Can you please go and figure out what's going on with Damon? Thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, she's like, I can't do it. So I need somebody else to do it. I have to stay here. I get that. You know, I can't go out to battle or go find Damon, but so you have to go do it. Um, so since she, since he was vocal about Rhaenyra not being able to go out and fight, he well, you know, I mean, he's gonna have some guards, but he's gonna go figure out what what the hell's wrong with Damon, uh, and that should be interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. We learned that the peasants. They kind of see uh, dragons. They thought dragons were infallible, and dragging the dead dragon through the city was probably not the best move, because it's a bad omen. Like they they don't, and they keep trying to leave. And it's one of the things that uh, Rhaenyra hears about. She sends one of her, I think it's a maid. I don't know, like to the city to try to help, um, because the. I forgot her name. Damon's ex, uh, <laughs> who is now in the court of Rhaenyra. I don't know what she is, but she's helping Rhaenyra. She was the one that was in the in the being kept in the jail. Um, she mentions she's like you know there are whispers that there's a lot of discontent among the peasants, and uh, don't underestimate the power of that. And uh, you see that. And then Aemon locking them in also is not going to help anything. So I feel like that's going to go one way or the other. And uh, it's either going to result in a lot of dead peasants and Aemon having nobody to rule over or <laughs> something else is going to happen. Um, we still have, you know, half the season to go. I think some more people are going to die. Uh, Jace has posed the idea of getting essentially cousins who have some, you know, Valerian bloodline who have some of that Targaryen blood in them, uh, to see whether or not they can ride the two dragons that they have. I didn't even know they had two dragons, uh, that don't have riders. They have two dragons that don't have riders because they don't have anybody else who is... Uh, Targaryen who can ride them at this point so um, we'll see if that pans out feels like we're going to get a spinoff it's going to be called How to Train Your Dragon it's going to be the kids version of Game of Thrones where they just they have a whole bunch of kids and they train them to see if they can ride these dragons it's going to be amazing that's the, that's, that's the spinoff it's coming I feel it I feel it in my bones it's going to be with Jace he's going to star in it He's going to teach kids how to ride dragons. It's going to be animated for kids. The kids' version of Game of Thrones. Coming soon to Max. <laughs> and uh, the last person I should mention is Raina, just because, I don't know, she was in the episode. Um, so she's over in her thing, and and whoever the fuck she's with uh, <laughs> is, I don't know, is uh, upset because she was given young dragons. And she's like, I was promised dragons. She's like, you got you got dragons. She's like, I didn't mean baby dragons. I mean, <laughs> like, actual dragons that can protect. It's like, well, these are dragons. I mean, are they not dragons? They're, they will grow. Um, so they're sort of in this, like, weird stalemate standoff where I guess the, whoever that is, accepts the fact that, well, there are dragons and I have dragons and I guess what? Here's your room. 
I expect to see you at dinner, you know, uh, just very, just short. Um, I love when they check in on these characters, like randomly in the episode, they did, we didn't need to check in on Adam. We were like, oh, here's Adam. And I was like, why is Adam in this episode? It just it breaks the flow. Like he didn't even, I, did we need Reyna this episode? I don't know, but it kind of felt like this was the episode to check in on everybody because there wasn't like one clear plot line. There was just a lot of talking, some, some movements, some frustration between our two uh, leads, you know, uh, between Alicent and, and Rhaenyra as to being women who are told uh, what they can and can't do and uh, what that's like in this day and age. Um, and it, it's such an interesting dynamic to also to see Rainer's, uh dynamic with Jace versus Allison's dynamic with Eamon. Uh, it's like, love your children. That's, that is the moral of the story is Allison didn't do anything with Eamon. Allison didn't love him enough. Allison wasn't there for him. You know, when you live in, when you're the, uh, you know, the queen or whatever, whatever she was called when Viserys was there. Um, and you have other people who rear your children they kind of just want you. So meanwhile, Raynera's children, well, she didn't necessarily have that. So she paid a little bit more attention to Jason Luke, who also paid a little bit more attention to her. And Jace now has a much better dynamic with Raynera than Allison does with Eamon. So payback's a bitch. Be a good mother to your kids. That's the moral of this story. Um, I like the episode. I thought it was well narrated. Um, but probably the best part was the description of both Melis as she's being drugged dead through the city, the dragon, uh, like with the maw and the teeth and everything hanging out and just like, just the, eh, of it all. Um, also I liked the, the grossness of because Eamon has the, it's like his first order of business is, it's something to cut the fucking rat cutters down. <laughs> I was like, go, go for you. I was like, that's the one good call he's going to make all season long. Um, so that got, that sounded really gross when that happened. Because those bodies have been toasting in the sun for a while. Uh, <laughs> somebody had a really shitty job to do that. Um, but... Yeah, um, that is, that's done. And, uh, I, I like the, the scene where they're cutting the, uh, the, the armor off of Egan and, and just describing how he's, how destroyed, destroyed he is. And like that bone protruding and then they set the bone, you know, but like you could see the bone through the skin. It's like, all those little, like, gory details, because Game of Thrones is nothing if not bloody. Uh, so, nice, nice job, Connor DeWolf. I remembered your name by the end of the of the video for writing the narration. I didn't think I would. That's why I kept going. I was like, ah, <laughs> names, me and names are just... Uh, I, I honestly don't even know half the cast. I've got, like, Olivia Cook, Matt Smith. Yeah, Emma Darcy. There you go. I named three people in the cast. Um, so that's, that's as far as I go. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll be back next week with more House of the Dragon from my blind perspective. And until then, I will... Oh, I should grade this. Uh, I liked it. I have no reason not to like it. It didn't really... There wasn't anything in here where I was like, mm, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I like there there are choices the characters make. Like I thought Christian was being a little bitch, <laughs> but I think that was good writing because he, uh, like, the, from considering the last scene where we saw, I, you know, Eamon was walking up on him and he had like the dagger. First he had the sword and then he had a dagger, and it's like I think Christian just doesn't want to die. You know, he's like Eamon could have me killed. And I'm just I'm gonna be a team Eamon. You know, he's just I'm gonna be on team Eamon. Um, 
I will say, I do think uh, Allison's brother is fucking useless and is totally gonna die. I'm not even bothering to learn his name as a character. I just, he, every time he speaks, I'm like, this guy is not battle ready. This guy's not battle tested. I don't know how he's alive. Uh, I can't imagine he survives much of this season. He has very little character development. They're like, oh, here's my brother. Great. He totally gonna, totally gonna get killed um, this season, I think. So uh, I'll give it an A. I'm giving it an A. Season five, uh, season two, episode five, and A. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for su subscribing, and I will see you guys next week. Until then.